Hello! You know what the world needs right now, friends. A crate of pure goodness. And you know what? I've got just the thing! My new tat supplier sends in a lovely good crate every so often. And you know what? It's time for one again. Obviously, you read the title of the video, didn't you? This is Good Crate 2. And that's a stencil of the image of the time I put on some glasses and a wig and a power glove and a piano key tie. I've lost the piano key tie now. It's annoying, isn't it? So, what's in the Good Crate this time? Well, as with all these things going back to Loot Crate in the early days, they always come with a t-shirt, don't they? Allow me to demonstrate this one. It's blue, dark blue. Monkey bastard hands! Half of you are now laughing, half of you don't know what that's a reference to. So, <clears throat> this is a reference to the quite rightly beloved old bizarre comedy series Garth Marenghi's Dark Place, which was on Channel 4 back in the day, many moons ago. Written and starring the lovely Mr Matthew Holness and, of course, Matt Berry, who is seen here in a plotline, because um, it's kind of like... Well, the joke is, it's a retrospective of an 80s horror series written by a sort of wannabe Stephen King, who is an absolute idiot in many, many ways. Matt Berry's character here, Dr Lucien Sanchez, is sort of turning into a monkey creature and has had a problem with a surgery due to having monkey bastard hands. Now I can wear that and people will know. They'll know all of it. As long as all of it is basically that reference from Dark Place. That's how t-shirts work. Right, item number two is these. What are these? These are Zig and Zag, right? I've spotted this much. So Zig and Zag were like puppet characters on The Big Breakfast, weren't they? I believe they started off on Irish television in the late 80s. That is about all I know about Zig and Zag. I was a bit too old for them probably when they came along, so it's like a set of collectible cards from cereal or something? What does it say on it? The Trifle Tower. Gustav Eiffel is only able to... Ah, so the joke is they're going around the world and seeing all the wonders of the world, except they're sort of comedy versions of it. Gotcha. They're wonders of the world. Pop it. Anyway, pop it. Ah, they're like little chocolate sweeties, aren't they? Right, so I'm guessing these came in boxes of poppets. Let's remove one. The Trifle Tower. Gustav Eiffel, who designed the Eiffel Tower, had one previous attempt. It was made of sponge, jelly, custard and cream and topped with poppets. It was called the Trifle Tower. Well, Zig and Zag are pleased to see it. Bless their hearts. Are they still around, Zig and Zag? I think they still do appear every so often, don't they? I don't think they... Did they have a children's show a few years ago? Or have I totally invented that? I don't know. Anyway, we've also got the Rhino's only um, poppet enclosure. What is this? The Secret Rhino Playground. Ah, uh -huh. you sit instead of the grave. Yes, yeah, yeah, I see what you've done there. Go on, what else we got? There's kind of a... A very odd Statue of Liberty holding nuggets, which is interesting. That is the Statue of Gilbert. The not-so-well-known Brother of Liberty, Gilbert was fascinated by poppets. That's handy, since uh, these were made to advertise poppets. And in honour of his favourite sweets, he created a 50-foot statue of himself holding a nine-ton poppet in each hand. He was quoted on saying in 1912, Yes, I really like those peanut ones. I wonder if poppets were around in 1912. I'm going to guess no. There are their unblinking ping pong ball eyes. What is this? Sink X? The Sink Sink Six. Ah, uh, it's a play on the Sphinx, but Roman and somebody sitting in the sink and washing himself. You're probably aware of this. Great Wall Ken! Ah, uh, I remember Street Fighter 2. Was that the Great Wall of Ken, I'm assuming, where somebody called Ken just made a really great wall? Am I correctly guessing the joke on this? Uh, I don't know, because I can't get into it to find out. <laughs> Hang on. Ken Jars of Nasal Croydon constructed a wall in 1988 out of a lot of bricks, and all his mates like to walk by it and say, That's a great wall, Ken. The great wall. Yeah, pretty much got that one. Uh, there's a druid next to a stone hedge. Yeah, yeah, I see where we're going here. Right, let's quickly brush through the other pictures. We've got giant golden poppet, I presume. Um, small poppet being held outside a pyramid. Uh, Giant, just like the suspension bridge, except its fridge is full of poppets. That's confusing. Uh, poppets on safari with giraffes. All the giraffes are wearing glasses and sneezing, by the looks of it. Don't quite understand that. I'll have to look at the name of that in a second. UFO markings. Ooh. And inexplicably black and white king. Is that, have they gone back in time for that one? Don't know. I want to know what the joke is in this one. Hang on. This is... 
the hanging bogey gardens of Babylon. I don't think that works quite as well as the others, but there we are. Well, you could also get a Zig and Zags pop it poster offer. If I write off to that now, oh, probably not. Closing date, 31st of May, 1996. Allow 28 days for delivery. Allow 28 lifetimes for delivery. It still ain't going to come. That opportunity has passed. Right, next item. Do, 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 do. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, hang on. Something's fallen. Oh. <laughs> okay, so these are the, the um, loot crates always came with a pin badge thing, didn't they? We've got one here. Oh man, let's get the focus on that. I've got another one of these knocking around somewhere. This is a crocodile or alligator character, I can't remember, with an Amstrad logo. <laughs> Amstrad being a reference here to the old um, make of computer, the Amstrad CPC 464 and 664 and all the others. Is this a oh, it is official. Look, it says on it. Amstrad 92. Oh, maybe it's beyond the computers then. Maybe it's when they were doing more generic electronics and stuff. Well, they always were, but you know, they were mostly known for the computers for a period. Um, yeah, wearing his, is it a football shirt? Were they a football? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just going to put this on a hat and never take the hat off. And people say, is that an Amstrad crocodile? I'll say, yes. Yes, it is. And then they'll give me all their money. That's how these things work. That is amazing. Uh, next up, an action figure. I'm always up for an action figure. Especially when it's bloody Doctor Doom. One of my favourite characters. Also one of my favourite characters to have figures made out of because the articulation doesn't show up because of his armour. You see? So this is from the Fantastic Four range by Toy Biz. Came out around the same time, I think, as those X-Men figures, maybe a little bit afterwards. So you get the Silver Surfer, Mr Fantastic, The Thing, Black Bolt and Doctor Doom. Appuyé sur le bouton, placé sur son épaule, droite pour propulser ses poings. Doctor Doom, you maniac. Let's press the button on his right shoulder um, to propel his poise. Poise? Hands? Gloves? Hmm, not sure about that bit. Uh, it's not actually... Oh, yes, it is. Press the button on Doctor Doom's right shoulder to send his hand flying. Probably should have just read that bit in English first. That'd have been easier, wouldn't it? Well, look at that. I... Yeah, unfortunately, with a collectible like this, you can't really open it, which is a shame, because, you know, that would uh, invalidate any resale value, isn't it? It's a fucking toy, I'm opening it. Um, what's on here? Oh, a little bit of background on Doctor Doom. The mere appearance of Victor Von Doom is enough to cause grown men to tremble. <laughs> tremble before Doom. Oh, multiple colours of green going on. So, he's got this NAF gun thing, which he can... Somehow hold. Does that work? No, it has to be that one. Maybe. <coughs> there we are. Where's this weird little um, gun that looks like a Luger he has in his thing? His trademark weird laser pop gun that looks like an old German sidearm. It's very odd. He's a strange man, is Doctor Doom. Face detail is not amazing, but not bad. Uh, I'm not... Yeah, the action feature is a shame. He's got that ridiculous peg coming out of his shoulder, which spoils the look a bit. Bit of knee articulation, always appreciated. And elbow articulation. Well, on this arm, obviously not on the other one. Right, go on then. How does this go again? There. <laughs> Pretty sure that's something Doctor Doom doesn't generally do. A dull sim-like arm extension. What a strange action feature. I mean, why not have him firing like an energy bolt from his hand or something? Very, very odd. Well, quite like that. I do love me a bit of Doctor Doom. Do you know what? I might actually do a jump cut and show you a Doctor Doom figure I bought recently. Uh, one of the more recent ones they've made, which is bloody beautiful. Hang on. Look at that bastard. Oh, there's no real light in him at the front, so you can't see his face too well. But believe me when I say this is an astonishing figure. Look, he's got his little Luger gun and everything. I think this is my favourite Doctor Doom figure ever released. Well, I think technically my absolute favourite, they did like a big statue of him once, which cost hundreds and hundreds of pounds, which I saw at a shop. That was beautiful, but I couldn't have afforded that if I'd sold everything I've ever seen, let alone everything I've ever owned. Anyway, you go away. You're not relevant to this crate. This Doctor Doom is stand here and guard us from that fool Richards. Right. Oh, oh I didn't see this. What's this? <laughs> it's a laser cut key ring that says amplitude. Oh, this is a deep reference. So, um, 
This is a reference to Mr. Eli Silverman and Cheap Show of uh, from the Barshans days, where yeah he was very into the word amplitude in order to describe tastes, which uh, his comedy partner Mr. Gallon was not terrifically uh, taken with after a certain period of time. Oh, that's sweet. I'm actually going to save that and give it to Eli at some point. That's fantastic. Right. <clears throat> Oh good! Some bloody toxic waste. Hazardously sour candy. Have you ever had these? These are like the most sour sweets, probably. I was going to say I ever had, but I had some weird quasar experimental sweets once in a plastic bag, which were just like acid um, crystals. I do quite like a bit of toxic waste. I won't eat the whole thing on camera, because it'll just be me making disgusting noises. Uh, what flavour is this? I don't know. Basically, these are fruity flavoured sweets, but they've got a lot of incredibly sour sherbet in them. And if you have a couple in quick succession, they can eat through your mouth. Oh, they've got all soft. Is that because they're old? Are these hideously outdated? No, nope, best before end, next, uh, middle of next year. Perhaps they've just got warm or something. Mmm. Mmm. Bloody hell, that's sour. As my aunt used to say, that'll draw your ass up to your elbows. Mm. She only said that about sour things. It wasn't like a catchphrase or something. Mm. I, I've forced with the, the sour. Only the pleasing fruit taste remains. Oh, God, I haven't had anything that sour for a long time. That hit me quite hard, actually. It's made my eyes water slightly. That's useful when you're looking at a viewfinder. <clears throat> right, next on the agenda of fun. Oh, my God. Bomb Blaster by Yino. Yep, it's another bloody game eight gate. Oh god, the artwork. It's like who killed Captain Alex or something. Strategy game. Strategy game for the game eight. Eh? One or two players. Well, oh dear. Uh, well, it's all in German, so I can't work out what's going on. But it's quite clearly a Bomberman clone. I do love the little cards the game eight games came on. Let's uh, drag it out and have a look. Look at that. Even comes in its own sweaty pouch. Notes. Don't bend or drop. Don't touch golden finger by hands. Good advice for life there. Keep away from heat, water, static electricity, and direct sunlight. Please put in the storage after use. Mm. That secret storage place that's uh, right near the ice caps. Uh, it's due north as you can go. Away from spying eyes who might want to play this game and destroy their lives. Um, is any of this in English? I wouldn't have thought so. No, nope, we've got French and you've got German. My French is poor, my German is non-existent. So, look, I had it just a hand and certainly didn't jump cut just then. Um, this is the Mighty Game 8. As you are doubtless aware, I did a video on it a while ago and it was in the last uh, Good Crate video. So, let's plug it on in and see what Bomb Blaster's like. I'm guessing the best game ever. I can't see the screen. I, th I think it's on. Yeah, bit, bit, yeah. Uh, um, I mean, uh, <laughs> I'd forgotten these things are impossible to bloody film, aren't they? Um, I tell you what, I'm going to play this at the end with specifically set up lighting, and let's shut up, and then uh, cut back into it. Right. Next up from the crate of the goodness. Oh, look at this. I've never owned any of these. Dino Riders figures. Same um, scale sort of as mask figures, if you remember those. Except rather than having cars that turned into helicopters and stuff, these rode fucking dinosaurs. They're like weird cyber implants and guns and stuff stuck to them. Um, I, off the top of my head, these were good guys. These were the bad guys. As I said, I never had any of these. I think he had a son or something, which came as a smaller figure. And that is about my entire knowledge of Dino Riders. I've barely even seen any of the toys up close. But yeah, quite nice. Very similar to Mask in that you've got the uh, articulated knees, but nothing at the elbow. His sort of blue eyes make him look like the leader of the Fremen or something. That's... Uh experience my god and then you've got snaky mc alienson with his purple harness and he looks exactly like that catch from space precincts which came years later oh that's great hang on they can sit on the end of dr doom's package and i don't know arbitrate he won't he's fallen off who dares sit on doom's package and that is the plot of the upcoming Fantastic Four film. Look out for that coming, 2022. Right, <clears throat> next up. Oh, right, there's something big at the bottom, hang on. Ah. Oh, it's a comic, I'll leave that till last. Right, 
Look at this, a lovely ZX Spectrum game. The Trapdoor and the sequel through The Trapdoor. Two games on one cassette. Ah, the beloved um, kids series, The Trapdoor. Um, don't you open that trap door, you're a fool if you dare. Um, these were games, yeah, written for the Spectrum. I spent bloody hours playing the first one. It was by that guy's name I can't remember who made Spectrum games with massive, incredibly colourful sprites. And you control Burke and the unseen thing upstairs wanted various foodstuffs and you had to kind of let monsters out of the trap door and then use them to make the foodstuffs to send to him. It's, uh, actually that's really quite close to what used to happen in the show as well. It's a bloody good game based on a property, actually, thinking about it. I spent bloody ages. It's incredibly difficult, but you always felt like you were getting somewhere. It was a very odd game. So, the sequel is also on this tape, Through the Trap Door. So, for years after reading the review, I thought this was an action game, for some reason. I don't know why I got completely the wrong idea from the review back in the God knows what, 1980, whatever. And it wasn't until many, many, many years later I actually played it and discovered it's a sort of more arcade adventure thing. Wander around, uh, find some keys to open some doors and all that kind of stuff. Uh, the plot is basically that uh, Boney, the wise skull, who uh, is the friend of Burke and Drutt, which is the little yellow spider thing that runs around, has been kidnapped by like a bony pterodactyl thing and taken down through the trap door where all the monsters and weird things are. So you have to go down there to rescue him. And it's just like full of monsters and stuff. I couldn't make a head nor tail of this when I first played it. I'll be honest, I just fell down the trap door and then couldn't work out what to do. Um, I ended up going back to it a bit later and like there's sort of a dual level system where you can kind of walk to the front of the screen and the back of the screen a bit, but it's not obvious. Um, and I had to actually look up basically how to do the first puzzle and I did it and I don't think much of this game. It got quite good reviews but um, it's not a patch on the first one and all the puzzles are a bit sort of weird and obtuse and I don't know it just felt quite irritating. There's a lot of um, trying to line things up very precisely and all that kind of thing. Don't know, didn't do much for me. I should open this up really shouldn't I and have a look at it. See back when games came on cassette tapes uh, and took a million to billion years to load. I like the way it's they've specifically sprinted uh, sprinted they've specifically printed a spectrum label and yet still left on the loading instructions for Commodore 64 and Amstrad. Thanks guys. Uh, so this is a re-release I presume because they sold both these games separately didn't they? Maybe Alternative didn't originally have them programmed. I don't know. Maybe they, they were just sort of re-released. Hmm, that doesn't sound right to me. Anyway, two hilarious games on one cassette based on the hit TV series Trapdoor. No, it's called The Trapdoor. Come on, show some respect to your bastards. Um, more mega alternative re oh my god gilbert escape from drill that was like a real so, oh man this is this is a deep cut so gilbert was like an alien puppet character but a sort of disgusting one from um can't even remember the saturday morning kids tv show uh was it ghost train oh, it's one of those ones but the one they had the millennium dustbin no wait that would no it's get fresh Get Fresh, that was the name. I was going to say, they wouldn't have had a spaceship on Ghost Train, would they? Yeah, so he was the alien of Get Fresh. And, yeah, it was quite a big thing for a while, so they had this game. And the game is quite interesting, if I remember. It's got a lot of sort of sub-games and things in it. A lot of effort put into it, but there we are. I do like a fold-out inlay. Right, in you go. And you can go with the other Spectrum games. On the shelf of Spectrum games. Because that's how that works. And finally... It's a bloody original 2000 AD featuring Judge Dredd. Who knows where evil lurks? Uh, is it that that guy with the ears? Don't know. The Supernaturals, a great new creepy comic. Inside, oh, is it, is it still in there? The bag is open. Now I am intrigued. Oh, look at this. Nemesis knows. Nemesis the Warlock. Bloody hell, that's some art there. Very pastely one, that, isn't it? New Nemesis Thrill starts this prog. So if you've never read 2000 AD, it sounds like something set in the past, but it was a futuristic comic because it started in the 70s. They decided not to change the name when they hit 2000 AD. It's where Judge Dredd comes from, as you're probably aware, of characters like Nemesis the Warlock and Slain. And now I'm trying to think of them off the top of my head. I can't come up with any, it's really annoying. Uh, Durham Red was one of them, wasn't she? Uh, oh my god, the ABC Warriors. Um, Alan Moore used to do the Future Shocks um, set bit, which was 
kind of a Tales of the Unexpected, but more sci-fi. Oh, it's such a good comic, such a good comic. Have a look in a minute. First, we're going to have a look at Supernaturals. That's how the TV advert went for this. So this is basically a comic based on action figures. That was a big thing in the 80s and the 90s to an extent. A ghostly new world awaits you. Not for sale. Oh, all right then. That's the end of that. No, just kidding. I made a noise. Um, so free preview comic, yep, with, <laughs> needless to say, here's all the characters. I've done a video on Supernaturals in the past, if I recall correctly. Because all the holograms have kind of gone tits up these days. I didn't realise they had, like, modern-looking cars. Mind you, they were from all different time periods or something, haven't they? You've got, like, Native American and Knight and all that kind of stuff. It's a very odd, very odd set. So what's the story in here? Oh, man, this is artwork that's familiar. Crikey. There can be no conflict of good and evil in Ghost World. It would only happen in the real world. Well, that's annoying. Um, so, yeah. All the supernaturals are made, and they look, look a bit like Skeletor. And they go off, and then they go to the real world, and they have a fight. This is very similar in layout and feel to a sort of slightly sanitised version of a Scream comic, isn't it? I have... Uh, an entire set of Scream comics, Scream comics, it was an old British horror comic. Didn't run for that long, and um, I got them off eBay for like 20 quid or something, it was unbelievable. I thought they'd be like super collector's items. Apparently not. Who do you think would make a good ghostling? Send us the name of the person you think could join us, and just which two characters they'd turn into. What are you talking about? Have you given any context to this? Bloody hell. Okay, you're selling the toys, we get it. There we are. Same promo shot. There we are, some more promo shots of things you can go in the shops and buy, kids. And then the ghostlings are all up to... The ghostlings were the slightly crappier toys, which was basically different holograms just slapped on um, generic bodies, really. I'll show you at the end. I'm at the end of the comic. Everyone lives. Hooray. Oh, God. He's in bad days, isn't he? Crikey. Um, there we are, these ones, basically. Just reusing the moles, the big bastards. So go on, when is this 2000 AD from? It's Prog 546 from 31st of October, ooh, Halloween, 1987. 28 pence Earth money, in orbit every Monday. Oh uh, yeah, so 2000 AD has kind of its own language, um, <laughs> almost tending towards its own dialect as it goes along. Here's Johnny Alpha, the strontium dog, forgot to mention him earlier. Ugh, Rogue Trooper, there's another one. Zenith. Oh man, Zenith was like a superhero thing, wasn't it? He appears to be getting in a fight with a Nazi there. Good for him. Uh, what else have we got? Ooh. Spooky image of something teleporting. What's in here? Freaks. Don't remember freaks. Oh god, that's a... That is a strong image, isn't it? Crikey. Like a sort of... Um, it's almost Picasso-like set up there. I'm not aware of freaks, actually. Oh, what's all this about? Halloween specials. Grab them before someone else does at Woolworths. Oh, it's just a load of spooky sweet things. All right, that makes sense. Hmm. Haven't seen Tharg yet. The comic was um, written or produced ostensibly by an alien character called Tharg. Tharg the Mighty, if I recall. Uh, Judge Dredd there he is with Chopper. Yes, Chopper and his um, flying surfboard, because, I don't know, surfing was cool, and flying surfboards are even cooler. But old Judge Dredd wasn't pleased with him because he would break the law. And then the scratchy, frightening art of Nemesis the Warlock with against the two Torquemadas. Um, cool. I'm not even going to attempt to explain Nemesis the Warlock here. It's certainly an experience. Um... Yeah, you, you're getting the impression from here that this wasn't really your standard comic for kids, but immensely, immensely influential. And its resonance can still be felt throughout the multiverse to this day. There's a really good um, documentary about 2000 AD. I can't remember what it's called off the top of my head, but if you search like 2000 AD documentary, you can probably watch it for a few pennies on a streaming service or something. It was very, very good viewing. Right, this is the best we can get it. <laughs> Involves having a light shining just below the bottom there. Um, I can barely see what I'm doing, so I look forward to that. This has got to be a Bomberman knockoff. Yeah, look, the little guy's dropping bombs. Why is the music so discordant? Why anything? Right, uh, let us try the old one player. Start button. Start button. Yeah, there we go. 
something's happening. No, no, no! Start, 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 start. I'm just going to hammer the button and hope something happens eventually. That's how most of these games work, to be honest with you. Uh, there we are. Right. Okay, yep. Running about. Oh, now the buttons do anything. That That's a problem. Surely this one should at least lay a bomb sometime. Oh, God, there we are. Oh! Ah, right. Right, I think I've got it. So... If my theory is correct, you lay the bomb in front of where you are, not, yes, not the square you're on. Unlike every other Bomberman game in the world. There's a lot of flickering nasties going on, which I'm assuming are the, oh, oh god, it's thrown me already. Um, are the evil enemies you must destroy. Much like, what was the Spectrum version? Eric and the Floaters. It's hard to believe there's an official version of Bomberman called Eric and the Floaters, but there you are. Uh, yep, I'm getting the idea here. There we are. Um, oh no. Oh, no. Oh. You see, it got me with its confusing thing. Right. Oh no. Well, it's just going to come in the corner and kill me instantly. Bloody hell. What sort of starting position was that game? Damn you, Walter Hades. So I'm trying to find a position that's at least vaguely comfortable to look at, but I just don't think there is one. Well, the there are some power-ups, because I saw them in the manual thing. Oh, the sound effects. I mean, the music's just sort of random notes enough as it is. Bonk, bonk, ee, ah, funk, ee, mm, you are playing Bomberman. Yeah, kind of got used to this now. Can you kick the bombs with the other button? No, of course you can't. Run away. To be fair, that was a later feature. Well, you get the idea. Do you know what? This is a perfectly competent version of Bomberman. Really was not expecting a game, you know, for one of these uh, somewhat less well-known consoles, shall we say, with rip-off games, to be quite this good. But yeah, perfectly good version. It's not up to, like, Wario Blast on the Game Boy or anything, but hey, nothing wrong with a decent Bomberman, is there? Jump cut, because there is a final item. I've saved the best for last. Have a look at this. So, the person who sends in these crates turns out they're a bit skilled at the old painting of the uh, gaming miniatures. Battle Brother Ashen of the Imperial Fists. <laughs> fifth Battle Line Squad, Fifth Company, the Heralds of Truth. So, this is a reference to the Twitch streams I do every Wednesday. That's Twitch, uh, twitch.tv forward slash Ashens, every Wednesday, 8 pm, UK time. Be there or do something else like they're the only things you can possibly do um because we played through the entirety of space crusade the older uh, amiga version of the board game as the imperial fists who are by far the worst ones to pick which i discovered shortly after getting into it so yeah look at that look at this bugger this is the one the one with the bolter, who's the one you have to take along on the mission who's basically not really any good except for killing the gretchens and occasionally an orc Look at that. Look at the bloody detail. Look at the uh, detail just on the base plate. Crikey. That is very nice. Look at the little intricate logo for the Imperial Fist. Or as we called it, the Imperial Club Foot. Because um, it looks kind of more like a messed up foot in the uh, home computer versions. Uh, I'm being very careful. Why don't I just take it off the base? That's a good idea, isn't it? There we are. We can be slightly less careful now. Uh, the Blessed Bolter. That's the gun they use. So, yeah, isn't that a beautiful thing? That's going to go on the shelf of super interesting items, which nobody must ever see unless they sign a non-disclosure agreement. So, that is the end of that. That was Good Crate number two. And I tell you what, it was rather lovely, wasn't it? And if you would like to get your very own Good Crate, uh, you can't, sorry. Boy, boy, boy.